Mutations! It's been a while since I've reviewed anything movie-wise here on Renoa Reviews. But in continuing my Brianna White arc on YouTube, I had mentioned in the last Renoa Reacts that I would review this movie just around the time for Halloween. When promoting this film over on Facebook and Instagram, it was known as Occupants back in 2015. From what I could find on the channel called YouTube Movies and TV, it's called Alterverse, and the release date states 2021. My guess is this this was a re-release. Maybe they saw the hype Brianna's Aerith brought in 2020's release of Final Fantasy VII Remake and sought to just cash in on the success and the hype. Ultraverse sounds a little too on the nose from just me viewing the trail and what I've seen on the theatrical reel of Brianna. All the same, spoiler warning ahead as I dive into my review of Ultraverse. The movie already opens very documentary style a la Paranormal Activity, stating that the Peterson Research Institute has assembled what they could of the events of what went down. Whereas we're introduced to Brianna's character, documentary filmmaker Annie Curtis. She's got cameras all around her house, much to her husband Neil's dismay. Her project is to document what detoxing on an all-vegan, no-sugar, caffeine, nicotine, or alcohol diet feels like. <gasps> Wait, that wasn't the spooky part of the movie? Okay... She says it's to cleanse the body and may open people up to a better lifestyle. Opening people up to new dimensions. <laughs> Clearing the cupboards of all the junk and processed eats while she's in the kitchen prepping a vegetable lasagna. Mm, not exactly first try Brie energy on that one. And already one of the camera views crackles and sometimes shifts over to this more greenish tone and one shot a brunette woman in a suit's walking same kitchen different tone end of week one annie states that the new diet isn't going well as she and neil are definitely feeling the effects of lack of caffeine and rich processed eats both are hungry and tired annie looking over the camera footage on her computer and finally notices that one camera switch over to a clean shaven neil and a brunette annie at least they get to eat pizza but they're very sullen looking on that side and they're not even like really looking at each other just kind of sitting in the same room so maybe they're not so happy couple in this other dimension annie brings in neil so they both can see just what's going on Annie's now stoked about having a better story about these alternate dimensions, even stating from seeing the footage that brunette Annie is suited up because she's a lawyer while the other Neil is possibly an accountant, which is something our dimensions, Annie and Neil, at one time were going to pursue, and they thought better on it. So again, more of that alternate dimension perhaps unraveling. Nothing on the cameras outside the house. It's all coming from inside. Same name, same house, all the same rooms. Just the, uh, the green tone to it. Very dark. Any later contacts via webcam, Dr. Peterson, head of that institute. He's got a PhD in parapsychology. He was shown the videos. He's known Annie enough to know she's not pulling some elaborate YouTube prank or whatever. He states that objects might be picking up these other dimensions, and he's concerned and may want to show the project and cameras, but he assures her it's one way so long as you just watch and don't interfere ever. Apparently this is happening to other people as well. There's these stock videos of other people talking about their experiences. It's all just to further that this isn't an uncommon experience. But again, he warns you, don't interfere. And now three of the cameras turn into the other dimension. I'm not the only one who noticed the uh, other Annie and Neil are together in the same house, but not really happy with one another as ours are. At least until an office party and some vodka brings them real close, like Magic of Bad Wow type close. <laughs> that is a sentence I never thought I'd say ever. <laughs> anyway, our dimension's Neil comes home and finds... Oh, there's something on the floor. Hey, to give the Annie at her office where her computer is. 
It's like, oh, I don't recognize this item. Reviewing the footage. Oh, it's the earring the other Annie took off before the aforementioned Bounce Bow Wow. It's from the other dimension, so oh no, they interfered. Now what? Gotta go back to Dr. Peterson. He states that, you know, you've been watching them so intently, the gap between dimensions is closing. You mentioned earlier about portals, small enough for the earring to pass through. Neil's starting to get real uncomfortable with this, but Annie's getting closer to a breakthrough and wants to continue. Maybe a little too close. Anyway, Mazel Tov, Brunette, Annie's pregnant, and we're back to the distance again with them. Our sides, Neil's freaked, wants Annie to check on her end, negative. So I feel, thank what a relief. No, it's something you'd probably want to say right now, because she's understandably pissed. Alternate Annie with morning sickness for the past couple of days, while alternate Neil brews some tea with ominous music. Is this motherfucker trying to poison Brunette, Annie? Sure enough, she falls over weak later on while Neil's at work. He has to pick her up off the floor and take her to a hospital. Comes back with even more sullen than she was before. Yeah, the baby's lost. Blonde Annie assumes the worst like I did, but our Neil assures Blonde Annie that he's, he's not the type to do something like that. They make up and possibly do some of their own bow chicka because next camera shots, Blonde Annie is announcing her pregnancy. She wonders if she got that way because of the alternate dimension, Annie. She's understandably pissed about that other dimension, Neil. It's assault in her eyes. Like, just, it's, she said it was like equivalent to like hitting her. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's pretty fucked up. Dr. Peterson uh, told blonde Annie not to interfere, but she says like she, she has to know what the other Neil did. So she writes a note and swoop into the portal it goes. Arneil's wary of what she just did, ignoring uh, the what Peterson warned her about, but she just says, everything's good, everything's good. Back to seeing more footage, they're like, okay, okay, find the note, find the note, she's gotta know. She does eventually find out uh, the warning note, she's like, oh, what's this? She takes pictures of her phone, keeping it close to the chest, when other Neil walks in, blonde Annie's pissed at, you know, why, why isn't she getting out of the house at first revolution? Neil's like, she's, she's gotta process and take some time with this. I'll, I'll stay with the footage and see what I, let's see what, goes down uh, he's starting to think like maybe she's a little relieved to not have the baby mm. Neil convinces Annie to stop the research and let's just focus on us becoming parents but eh, you've already tampered with dimensions too late now because here comes brunette Annie with a flying pan to blondie to the face Neil comes in oh oh he sees the cameras that, that we were going to take them down tomorrow it might show us how Bru brunette Annie got here Footage of her with the painkiller responsible makes her own booze drink of it for her Neil to consume. Revenge! Her dosage is much stronger. That Neil is out. With her unmessed beer and pizza in hand, brunette Annie hey, gives a little salute to the camera. Blonde Annie and her Neil think, okay, both these people are just batshit insane to do this. Noise from the house has them investigate. Brunette Annie with a note of her own to send back, thanking them for the tip. Quote, congrats on the baby. Take good care of it. She knows. Blonde Annie wants to truce and go their separate ways. Like, okay, camera's coming down. This never happened. We go our separate ways into the portal. The note goes, camera's off. Next morning, our side, the cameras are back on. Now to document a clear break-in, because she was there again. Sign in yellow, uh, like, handwritten with paint, no deal. Yeah, yellow paint message, and a yellow handprint on Annie's stomach. House a mess, they're both really shook, blonde Annie feels Brunette's blaming them for their happy marriage. They talk to Dr. Peterson, who is all, Sever the bond! The cameras are like tendrils, and now it seems like the other Neil's trying to get here, too. Like, there was, like, this scream and a distorted face for, like, a second. That didn't sound like Annie. I was like, a really weak attempt at a jump scare. I was just like, okay, that happened. <laughs> it just, like, interrupted their conversation. <laughs> like, rude! Dr. Peterson tells him, hey, Radically change the dimension if you want this to end. Natural disaster, that sort of thing. It's like, Neil's like, oh, we can't wait around for something like that to happen. He says, 
wreck the cameras, torch the place. It's the only way you might be able to just break it completely. You gotta shatter this uh, wormhole. Blonde Danny still thinks she can talk her way out of this. You know, you needed to know. We're taking everything down. We won't interfere anymore, so please leave us be. She'll send that message in a camera through the portal. It comes back charred the next day. They get the footage from that. Like, how did this get charred? Brunette Annie rightfully pissed at her Neil, who is bedridden sobbing. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> and Brunette Annie lights that motherfucker ablaze. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, now we know why the camera was charred. We know she also knows how to sever the dimensions. Blonde Annie shelves the project thinking, okay, this is over. I'm, I'm done with filmmaking. I'm gonna turn all these cameras off and then later a uh, more pregnant Annie is elated to start a new project with, I guess, new cameras or the camera she had back on. Either way, last shot's brunette Annie from behind the happy couple. And we get a we get a little text message saying like, oh, now it's, it's case 860-something. It's a missing persons case now. Credits. And that was Alterverse. I can't say I'm a fan of most horror flicks. They're almost always now just waiting and waiting for the jump scares to happen. This was waiting around for not even that. I never really got jump scared in this one for some reason. I, I got more of the unnerving vibe, just trying to put myself in the shoes of Blonde Annie and I heard Neil getting caught up in this extra-dimensional voyeurism and just trying to get out of it, albeit too little too late. Tension rising for the couple watching the other side do horrible things. Right, and as with these reviews, I gotta do my best and worst. Um, Other Dimension Neil hands down for worst character, like not, not even faulting Brunette Annie for the revenge, but I would think as a lawyer she could have easily... You know, done this without the whole manslaughter thing. But I get it, she's... I'm willing to bet because alternate dimension, they're both a little more on the, uh... Not all there and maybe a little murderous evil angle or a... F a f or like a 180 flip side to our blonde Annie and unshaven Neil. I'd argue brunette Annie snap due to grief, but... Then what would the other Neil's deal be? That dude's just an a-hole. They never really get into the dimensional differences, I, so you're you're left to assume. It's just that their sides, I think, definitely lean to more towards cruel acts towards one another. But she only did the burning after she, she tried to make her have a miscarriage. Like she's un, she was understandably fuming at him. She got in there with the. Uh, whew. But I, I, I guess I wanted to know more about the alternate dimension aspect myself. Like, take out some of the just wording and pacing and give me a little more exposition. One could argue with indie horror flicks that less is more, I guess. Take too long explaining it would be a detriment as well. Best character? I guess both Annie's showing their intelligent sides as to how both p piece things together for better and worse throughout the movie about the other dimension and stuff like that. How they both know of everything. Uh, blonde Annie's high on the intelligence stat, but a little lax on the wisdom to not shelve the project or burn the house down when Dr. Peterson all but told her to do just that. Neil warned her even to kind of, like, I get it. Blonde Annie's like a low bar for best character. <laughs> uh, th th this is clearly searching for a no on that Brianna white bread. Mm-hmm. Like Annie was all, you'll pay if you come for my baby, and then the next scene she's doing the diplomacy shit again. Bitch hit you in a frying pan on sight! She elkabonged you! She officially cray cray! I'm shocked they revealed the baby was still okay after the fact. But yeah, this is Exorcism 101. Burn it to the ground and sever all ties. But I guess good luck explaining that to the police on all your cameras spontaneously combusting. But you and your baby live? Maybe. Her movies always gotta have leave you on that one last stinger or scare. I'd honestly be shocked if they didn't end up dying <laughs> to brunette Annie. Horror movies all end too cliche for me. Feels like the goth click of movie genres. If they all end with a shock, then is there really any shock value to begin with? Again, it's such a low-hanging fruit for, like, best moment, but just all my homies hate alternate Neil, so it was, I was like, I was, like, ecstatic when he was getting his. I was like, yeah! <laughs> I'm seeing Brunette Annie finally work it up to savor the moment to get to the how-could-use and burn his ass alive. 
uh, worst moment. I don't know the effects for the portal gave me like these Langoliers vibes with its graphics. It just looked really out of pocket and place and just, I felt it really clashed with the all shot in one house for 95% of the film indie vibe it had going for it. I guess if you jump cut it, it's seen as lazy. I don't know. Again, it just feels like I'm really picking away at this one. But anyway, that will conclude my review for Alterverse. Not very high up on rewatching, but if my homies in the Strange Rebel Discord are up to watching it together, I'm down. Be good to get some of uh, Brianna's input on the film. I'm serious. Spill the tea, sis. Just don't drug anybody with it. Not cool. Again, really fucking hate you, alternate Neil. <laughs> Scumbag of the century! <laughs> if the third annual upcoming searches had, like, a Razzie Award, alternate Neil's getting it for biggest douchebag. Turns out this was my 40th Renoa review. Join me for number 49 in December... A Christmas movie where Brianna once again plays antagonist role in The Christmas Dance. Until then, take care and thanks for watching.